The CES starts in a few hours. As you can tell, we are not there. We are in my messy studio. So come with me travel to Las Vegas so we can explore some ridiculous laptop offerings together. And oh my gosh, we're gonna be late. Come on, we gotta go. Now, the biggest laptop news I'm expecting to hear this week is Intel's new Panther Lake chips, which on paper promised to roll out a whole generation of efficient laptops. Intel Core Ultra Series 3. That's what we're gonna go check out. Hey, there's the Panther. What are the odds? But you know how the marketing goes. Something is always better. So today, let's see if we can get our hands on an actual Panther Lake laptop to see if we can tell a difference. And what better place to start than Acer? They have this whole event set up to show off their latest laptop offering. So let's check some of these out. I did actually end up bringing my current Predator Helios Neo 16 SAI on this trip, partially to play video games on the plane, but also I wanted to see what all they were gonna update about this laptop, because the current model has been fantastic for me. It's turned into the laptop that I use if I actually wanna like do stuff. And they did happen to have a 2026 version version of this laptop right here. Which, if I'm honest, kind of felt like meeting the identical twin of like your really good friend, but your friend and his twin like studied completely different things at college. L let me explain. If you take a look at the 2025 version and the 2026 version, I bet you you can't tell which one is which. And that's because the chassis is identical. Well, nearly identical. I, I did find one change. Here you can see on the back logo here, there's a few more lines on the 26 model. These, these are the important updates, let me tell you. <laughs> the metal chassis in, well, both of these does make it feel a bit more premium premium, doesn't feel nearly as like wobbly as a full plastic chassis. So I'm not mad they didn't change it because it's if it's not broken, don't fix it. And they've also continued on the line of keeping this laptop ultra thin, which is fantastic for traveling around like through airports. The screen in the 2026 version is also still OLED, meaning the darks are super dark. And honestly, I'm, I'm so obsessed with this screen. I have a theory once you use an OLED laptop, you can't really go back to not using OLED. It makes games look so nice. Okay, but back to my weird analogy of like your friend's twin who studied different things at college. Okay, so it's clear from the physical outside perspective, these laptops are nearly identical. But what is different is on the inside. Remember those Panther Lake Intel chips we were talking about? Well, if we open up the task manager in the 2026 version, boom, there we go, an Intel Core Ultra 9 386H. And I'm currently filming this before Intel's like big announcement. So it's kind of fun to get my hands on one of these laptops before they announced it because some of the stuff they're promising with these is kind of bonkers. Particularly particularly around power efficiency. Because sure, there's updated P cores, E cores, and LP E cores, but this is not only the very first consumer chip built by Intel on their 1.8 nanometer architecture, they've also thrown in some really cool technology into the mix. My absolute favorite being PowerVIA, which is a brand new way to provide power to transistors. Since I'm on a roll with analogies, bear with me. Prior to PowerVIA, in like the traditional sense, you can think of a transistor as a plant with flowers above and roots also above. You can imagine how the roots and the flowers would have to fight for the same space up above. And in our transistors, this is our signal routing and this is our power routing. They're fighting for the same space above a transistor. And so what PowerVIA does is it detaches the power routing and moves it underneath the transistor. Now you have your power and your signal wires in completely separate spots. Just like how a plant has flowers above and roots below. That's like a very simplified version. It's all a lot more technical and figuring it out is, is a pretty big deal because it unlocks a ton of efficiencies. Not only can transistors hypothetically switch faster, there's also less congestion. So you can build more dense processors that can also reduce the heat in a system while increasing performance per watt, both which sound amazing when it comes to mobile devices. So on paper, these new Intel chips could set off a wave of really efficient laptops. And in practice, we have one in front of us to test. Now, unfortunately, this is just a display model, so I wasn't able to truly benchmark all of this stuff, but I completely intend to when I get my hands on like a real production ready unit of this in the future. So stay subscribed if you wanna see that. What I did do though with this laptop, since I had my hands on it, was I turned on as many power efficiency things I could do and try to see how it would still game. So for starters, I unplugged the unit from the wall, meaning it was entirely running off of battery. I then also switched off the dedicated GPU so it wasn't always running, although I couldn't find a way to like completely shut it off. And then I also enabled the battery efficiency mode to always be on. That's the feature that turns on when your laptop's like under 30% battery or so. Basically that tells the computer to use as little power as possible. 
and then I fired up a video game. <laughs> and honestly, at least anecdotally, this was much more smooth than I was anticipating. The fact it was still running at the full resolution of the monitor, 2560 by 1600, without obvious frame dropping or stuttering, was pretty impressive. That said, I did also have Intel's frame generation enabled, so you can see here in the settings that was turned on. And if we scroll down, it does look like the texture settings were also automatically reduced down to low, which, you know, makes sense. But this was running great. And this is what I want to test more of. Like, I, I want to push this to the extreme. Can you, like, how long can you play this for without dropping frames? How long can you edit 4K footage in DaVinci Resolve on battery of these laptops? The little bit that I tested makes it super promising, which gives me a lot of confidence that it would be a pretty exciting thing to continue testing. Okay, so everything we've been talking about is all around like the power efficiency of the CPU, but the new Intel chips also have an updated NPU. And I'm pretty sure there's over like three times as many tops in this 26 refresh compared to the 2025 version of this laptop, which is kind of crazy. It went from like 13 tops to over 40, which also makes the refresh a Copilot Plus PC as well. So anything related to neural networks is gonna run really efficiently on these new laptops. And even if you're not running your own, you know, local LLMs, this will still help during Zoom calls when like the background is blurred. That uses, you know, the, the, the neural network. Things like that will run way more efficiently, which, which seems to be the name of the game for this upgrade. If I had to summarize in a single word, I would say, more efficient, which I'm realizing is two words. Okay, so two words, more efficient. Because the 2026 version has up to an RTX 5070. So when you're plugged into the wall, you should get some pretty solid performance out of that. And when you're on battery, well, these new Intel chips are, you know, are doing their thing. I think it also kind of opens up a bit of a wider demographic for this type of laptop. The efficiency play and being able to like edit 4K footage on the go is super enticing to content creators or tech enthusiasts who also still want to be able to play higher end games. And like the metal finish of this definitely elevates it to like a more premium spot compared to Acer's other offerings, which we should talk about for a little bit because there's a whole room full of these. Although I want to focus on this one right here. I also had a chance to look at the 2026 Acer Nitro V16 AI, which similar to the Predator Helios Neo 16 AI, the Nitro does also have access to the Series 3 Intel Core Ultra chips, although this one is a 7. This one is definitely more of Acer's essential gamer budget laptop. Like if you were a high school student or a college student, I would recommend you looking at this one instead. That said, it still has like over 40 tops, so it is also a Co-Pilot Plus PC, and also still has access to a 5070. So you can still for sure game on this. Unlike the previous laptop though, this does not have OLED and it does not have that metal finish. So again, Again, kind of differentiating itself a little bit by being more of like the budget conscious version of the gaming laptop. Also has this camera shutter, which the other laptop does not have. So, you know, there you go. At this point, I feel like I've gotten a taste of these new Intel chips, but my appetite is large. <laughs> I'm sure we're all gonna be hearing a lot of news about these new Intel chips. And like I said, my, my current theory is that we're gonna see a ton more laptops kind of pivoting into this efficiency route, which for sure benefits all of us as consumers. Having laptops that work longer and more efficiently on their actual battery is, is good. I plan on covering a lot more at CES, so make sure you're following along. I intend to find the most ridiculous thing at the entire conference. It's kind of like what I do every year. You know, there's a lot of ridiculous stuff here, but what's the most ridiculous thing? We're gonna find out. And I wanna give a big thank you to my friends at Acer and Intel for inviting me to this event and, and giving me a hands-on look at their new laptops. Unfortunately, I don't have MSRP numbers for you guys yet, but, but as soon as they're available, I'll go ahead and update the description down below. I'll also go ahead and leave all the information I know about these laptops down there for you to check out as well. But that's all I got. I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one. Aw, yeah.